Hi, I'm Jason Lawrence, and my colleague Dan Goldman and I will be presenting our work on Project Starline, a high-fidelity telepresence system. This last year has reminded us just how much we value being together with friends and family and our colleagues. And despite the ubiquity of video conferencing systems, it's also reminded us just how large of a gap there is between being physically together with another person and communicating with them on a 2D screen and webcam. This work is about narrowing that gap. We introduce a complete end-to-end -end symmetric communication system that we've developed at Google that gives people the experience of being with another person who is, in fact, far away. Our system combines an auto-stereoscopic display with a real-time 3D capture and real-time 3D audio pipeline to present the remote person as they truly are, including faithfully reproducing important nonverbal cues like eye contact. We developed and used these prototypes across our distributed team for many months of regular meetings and also UX research, some of which we will highlight in this talk. Now, there has been a considerable amount of work in this area over the last 30 years, and prior research systems have been described that also use freestanding displays and depth sensors. Our work is unique in that we present a fully symmetric end-to-end -end network system that achieves an unprecedented level of video and audio fidelity. More recent work has investigated head-mounted displays for telepresence applications, including the Holoportation Project for Microsoft Research in 2016, and more recently, the line of research on codec avatars being pursued at Facebook Reality Labs. Although this direction shows a path to eventual low-cost and portable systems, a key benefit of our approach is that it enables a fully unencumbered user experience. The participant doesn't have to wear anything or perform any pre-meeting data captures. Also, our display and setup achieve a retina resolution of 45 pixels per degree across the target field of view, showing the other person in greater detail than what is currently possible with today's state-of-the-art VR headsets and AR glasses. Now, I will give a high-level overview of our design. Our system is intended to be used by a single person at a time. They sit on a bench that is connected to a large infrared backlight located directly behind them, and they see their remote conversation partner through a 65-inch auto-stereoscopic display located roughly 1.2 meters in front of them. This display conveys both stereo and parallax cues to the seated participant and shows the remote person at their true physical size. The system also produces 3D spatialized audio that appears to emanate from the remote person's mouth. A 3D video of the participant is reconstructed at 60 frames per second from two camera viewpoints located above the display and one viewpoint located in a central middle wall. This middle wall also serves to hide the bottom edge of the display to avoid depth conflicts that would otherwise appear whenever the remote person's body at that edge extends beyond the plane of the display. This real-time 3D video and 3D audio data is then compressed and streamed bidirectionally over the internet to enable a synchronous conversation to take place between the two sides. The combined effect is that each participant can see and hear the other person as they truly are, within a head box of roughly one meter cubed, centered about 1.2 meters in front of the display. Key nonverbal cues like eye contact and hand gestures are all intuitively conveyed. Now I'm going to hand things over to Dan Goldman, who will describe the main technology components that power this experience in a bit more detail. Thanks, Jason. Let's walk through the components we can see here. We designed our system around a 60 hertz, 65 inch 8K autostereoscopic display. For a typical observer sitting 1.25 meters away, the lens array presents each eye a separate subset of the display pixels, about 5 million pixels of each red, green, and blue primary providing angular resolution of about 45 pixels per degree. This is more than twice the effective resolution of the Oculus Quest 2 or Vive Pro 2, each around 20 pixels per degree. To steer this display to the viewer's eyes, we use four face tracking cameras running at 120 frames per second. These estimate the 3D location of the eyes, ears, and mouth within about five millimeters of precision. We use a fast face tracker to find 2D facial features and triangulate to find the 3D locations. These are used to render the appropriate viewpoints to steer the 3D display 
and to drive free space spatialized 3D audio. The spatialized audio system uses two speakers and an array of four microphones. Together, these can capture and reproduce speech as if it came from the mouth of the other participant. On the input side, face tracking data enables dynamic beamforming, sharpening the microphone's directionality to combat noise and reverberation. On the output side, tracking enables the system to spatialize playback at the location of the speaker's mouth, and binaural crosstalk cancellation to target the correct waveforms at the listener's ears. Thus, even though the speakers are spaced far apart, the sound appears to emanate from the remote user's mouth. To capture a 3D video of the subjects, we use three groups of cameras we call pods, each with two infrared cameras and one color camera. The bottom pod contains an extra color camera zoomed into the face for higher resolution there. For stereo reconstruction, we use time-varying infrared pattern generators that create dot images only visible in infrared. We use windows of five infrared image pairs, four with dot patterns and one with an infrared backlight, to compute depth from space-time stereo using the Espresso algorithm we shared at 3DV 2018. This algorithm takes as input infrared image pairs at 180 frames per second and computes synchronized output depth images at 60 frames per second. The infrared backlight is used to carve noisy background data from the stereo images and provides a reliable boundary for stereo estimation, improving accuracy at silhouette edges, as you can see in this result. In total, three depth and four color streams are sent over WebRTC using GPU video codec hardware. On the receiving side, after decompression, the system reprojects three depth images to the local subject's eye positions. A traditional volumetric fusion system would take these three depth images and fuse them in a voxel representation, extract the isosurface using marching cubes, and then render the triangles. We can improve this a little bit using modern GPU hardware by eliminating the surface extraction step and just raycasting the voxels directly. This eliminates the additional data structures and unpredictable memory usage of a triangle mesh. However, it still requires a lot of GPU memory to store that voxel grid, and a lot of memory bandwidth for the raycast and kernel to retrieve it. By examining the pseudocode for this two-pass algorithm, we make some observations. First, it's making two passes over most voxels, just in a slightly different order. And second, we only fuse three depth images for each voxel, so the inner loop here is very fast. Using these observations, we can interleave the fusion and raycasting passes into a single kernel, fusing the depth images on the fly as we step through rays. This eliminates the need to store voxel grid and GPU memory entirely, dramatically reducing memory usage and improving runtime by a factor of six over separate fusion and raycasting kernels. By eliminating this need to sample on an arbitrarily aligned voxel grid, it can also reduce aliasing artifacts, as seen along the silhouette edge here. Next, we project the color camera images onto the fused geometry and combine the colors using blend weights calculated from surface normals. We can evaluate the quality of this image reconstruction by placing cameras in front of the display along the remote user's line of sight and then render a reconstruction from the same viewpoints. Here's what a real image looks like. And here's our reconstruction matted on a neutral gray. Although you can see some differences in the background shadows and some holes around the waist and hands, the majority of the torso and face are reconstructed with extremely high fidelity. Here again is the real image, and here's the reconstruction. Here are some more comparisons illustrating the high reconstruction fidelity of this system. Our system doesn't work equally well for all scenes. Notice that thin or frizzy hair is not well reconstructed, as it falls below the minimum size of objects that our stereo system can detect. 
Similarly, fast motion can break up the reconstructed geometry, resulting in holes and incorrect texture projections. Eyeglasses also have thin geometric features and transparent surfaces that are missed by our 3D capture, causing incorrect texture projections. Despite these limitations, Project Starline conveys a strong sense of remote co-presence. Next, Jason will share how we measured that. Thanks, Dan. We evaluated our system in several different ways. First, we used them for our own team one-on-one -on -one meetings over the period of about a year, connecting our team members in Seattle, Mountain View, and New York. People reported experiencing a strong sense of being together with the other person, of occupying a shared physical space, and many commented that they later recalled the exchange as if it had happened in person. We also conducted a pilot study with several other teams inside Google who had access to these systems for their team one-on-one -on -one meetings and were asked to complete a survey at the conclusion of each meeting, comparing their experience to the normal 2D video conferencing system deployed throughout the company. We collected a total of roughly 300 survey responses from 117 unique participants across three sites and over a period of about nine months. Our system rated significantly higher in key value indicators for communication, including the sense of feeling present with your meeting partner, the degree of attentiveness between the two participants, the ability to effectively use body language, and producing an overall stronger personal connection. Outperforming 2D video conferencing is more challenging than it sounds for several reasons. First, 2D video is highly realistic, whereas existing real-time 3D capture technologies are all known to suffer visual artifacts, putting them in an inherent disadvantage. Second, compared to 2D displays, autostereoscopic displays introduce quality trade-offs, such as lower resolution, tracking latency, or accommodation virgins conflict, which can degrade the experience for some viewers. The fact that our system shows statistically significant user preference despite these challenges is noteworthy. We also evaluated our system by measuring the frequency of specific nonverbal behaviors that are known to indicate effective meeting dynamics. We compared our system to a 2D baseline system with comparable image resolution and display size. We observed statistically higher rates of important nonverbal cues like hand gestures, head nods, and eyebrow movements. This finding suggests a greater level of engagement and sense of co-presence between the two participants. Last, we also observed a significant difference in the number of words people would use to recall what they had discussed in these two different conditions. Our findings suggest that people recall roughly 28% more of their meeting content with our system. Please refer to our paper for the details of these different studies, along with an audio realism study that we also conducted. Looking ahead, we are excited about further refining our technology to expand access to Project Starline by reducing the cost, size, and complexity of our current system. Thank you for your attention. And I'd like to also thank my co-authors and the many other people who made this work possible.